thoughts and I had a hard look at myself and what I really wanted out of this life and I yeah. think that you shape your reality at the end of the day and with just a little bit of self-belief taking a risk yeah and just doing what truly makes you happy oh, wait a minute <laughs> can you see this look oh, oh and there's a baby so down there hi it is allison and we have another edition of the scale it method podcast and this one was uh just one that we decided to do last minute here because i happen to be on safari at the lion sands sabi sands reserve in south africa at the ivory lodge and as you can see behind us this is absolutely stunning and uh, i've been on safari with this amazing woman kimberly lahani who happens to be our guide mike and i my husband have been uh, here for a few days and it has been truly a life-changing experience and a lot has to do with this <laughs> incredible woman who is our guide and you are one of there aren't very many mm. female guides yes absolutely so at the moment i am one of two female guides on the team and one female student guide yes. yeah that's amazing so i wanted to share her story because on the Scale It Method podcast, we talk about scaling your business, obviously, but it's also about scaling your life and really following your heart and living your biggest dream possible. And that's what you have done. So I want to share your story. So you were in the corporate world for a long time pharmaceutical sales how many <laughs> how many and where were you doing that um so it was all based in johannesburg but yes pretty much straight after high school i went straight into corporates and it was pharmaceutical sales and i was in that industry for about six years yeah so i was <laughs> still fresh out of school and just straight into working yeah and yeah. so what was what was going on then what were you feeling you know, I felt at the time it was almost like something I had to do. You know, it's like the norm. You come out of high school, if you're not doing university, you're going straight into working. And, you know, my family are quite big corporate people. So I felt I needed to also just stay in the lane and do the same thing, climb the corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. So it was something that I did. And don't get me wrong, I put my heart and soul into it. I worked really hard. Um, reap the rewards of it but I just wasn't happy yeah wasn't, what were you feeling inside not much really I, I just felt I just felt like there was more to life I honestly felt that there was more to life and that my purpose here on this planet was more than just spending time in my car in this rat race driving from one pharmacy to the next and you know so I just felt like I was destined for something bigger than that and it's it honestly i was i was very unhappy i can't remember waking up in a morning where i was like yay yeah <laughs> going out today <laughs> i'm excited it's it, those days were very mm -hmm. far and few in between you know? yeah so, I, I really but so many fulfilled. people live this daily maybe you're feeling that now yeah. right yeah. and you just kind of accept it or settle that this is all there is, right? Right, you almost like put yourself in a box, you know, and you know, because this is the norm, this is what society says, this is what your friends are doing or what your family are doing or what, you know, and you kind of feel like you don't want to step out of line because then it's just you on your own going off. So it, it's, yeah, it, I just think I sat and I had a hard look at myself and what I really wanted out of this life. And I yeah. think that you, shape your reality at the end of the day and with just a little bit of self-belief taking a risk yeah and just doing what truly makes you happy and so what did you do like let's there was this shift mm. i mean did you wake mm. up one day and go okay i can't do this anymore <laughs> literally went that way i'll never forget it it was a thursday morning thursday morning so weekend was close but you know i had woken up my alarm went off at five o'clock in the morning and I remember just laying in bed. I had my whole day planned on where I was going. I was doing quite a distant trip for that day. And it just hit me. And I said to myself, I actually, what am I doing? I cannot do this. I don't want to feel what I'm feeling anymore. It's yeah. not serving me. It's not, I'm too young to be this unhappy, you know? Yeah. And I'll never forget it. I got onto the phone, five o'clock in the morning. I phoned my boss and I said, listen, I'm sorry, but I quit. And 
and okay so he, he was a bit devastated and they really worked hard to they you know we'll increase your salary we'll we'll you know give you more benefits and it's like you know it got to a point where it wasn't about the money you know it wasn't about the benefits it wasn't about any of that you know it was more my own my own happiness yeah. you know i wasn't i wasn't feeling fulfilled and i'll never forget i did that and i had a mild panic attack because i was like what have you just done? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you going to do now? You know, like you've got bills to pay. You've got all of these things to do. I hadn't even spoken to my mom or anyone about this. It was my decision. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of got to the point where I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter for anybody else. It's me that matters right now. Mm -hmm. And I literally took a minute. I processed everything and then I got into the Internet. This was before my field guiding journey started. And I kind of took a sabbatical for myself just go figure out what I want to do. I upped and left for the States. I went and lived in America for three years. <laughs> it was supposed to be one year, but it ended up being three years. And I think that's where I finally just realized that, you know what, I can do whatever I put my mind to. Yeah. Yeah. And then pretty much when I came back from the States, a whole new Kim, whole new person, whole new perspective on life. And um, my parents as a welcome back gift, um, actually booked a weekend away at um, a lodge that I actually spent, a, spent four years <laughs> yeah. working for. So it was at that moment where I arrived there and I was like, stars aligned, everything made sense. So I, what was that like? You got on the safari and for those of yeah. you that have never done a safari, I mean, this has been a dream of my husband and mine for years it's been on our bucket list and we actually we actually booked this trip three years ago before the pandemic and we had to keep putting it back but it truly like today we were on the reserve and yes. saw two male lions literally feet from us it's like you are literally in the wild and so but that you came with your parents mm -hmm. and then what was it where you were like this is what I gotta do. It is the strangest thing. It was, it was exactly that. It's almost like an instant, almost like seeing the love of your life for the first time, you know? I don't know how to explain that feeling, but it was just this overwhelming sense of peace and just like knowing this is it. This is it. And I became obsessed. And I, and I, I remember my guide, Shane, I almost chewed his ears off with my millions of questions of how did you do this? Where do you get there? How do I begin? Because this is what I need. I mean, I was, I was in absolute awe sitting on the game drives. I was sitting next to him, like <laughs> next to him in the car, just asking questions. How do you know this and everything? And just the whole lifestyle. He pretty much walked me through everything. And I fell in love with the lifestyle. It's a very, very simplistic lifestyle, which I really love. And um, yeah. And I just, I said to myself, this is it. And, and so you, then you went to study. Mm -hmm. And I actually, that very morning, because um, we were only there for a weekend, but that very morning I jumped onto the website and I found that the company I work with, NJ Moore, um, Field Guide College, they had an intake coming up in J July. I was there in January. So I applied. Craziest thing. So I went through a ton of interviews. Uh, I think over 150 applicants um, applied. And only 13 of us got accepted into wow. into this course and and that was it i kind of just i knew nothing about anything that i know now you know so i kind of went with an open mind and a, a willingness to learn and it's amazing because you know because that passion has always been there it was easy learning you know mm. it was i mean look it wasn't always easy but it, it but was, you wanted to learn. I wanted it. That's I was the so thing. hungry for it. Something yeah. that you're so passionate exactly. and excited about it. You just absorb it because you're I, just so fascinated, you right? You absolutely do. And I did that for six months, you know. And the craziest thing is, you know, after that, you sort of go into like a, an internship for another six months at a lodge. So they'll either place you at a Maritaba or a Lion Sands. And my internship placement ended up being at Maritaba, the very first lodge i ever went to you know as a guest and yeah. now i'm like a student there and a year later i got my i got offered the position which was also not very easy um you really do have to put your heart and soul into it and, and i feel if it's not something that you truly love you'll struggle it's it's tough especially being yeah. a female but we'll probably get to that but yes it, it was difficult um but so rewarding so worth yeah. it and 
it's literally been five and a half years since and i've not looked back <laughs> yeah and, and, and um, she is she knows everything like you're <laughs> literally driving miles and miles through the terrain i don't even know how you know where you are <laughs> And then, oh, there's a rhinoceros. Oh, there's giraffes. And knowing so much about these animals and how they live and and uh, their behavior and, and, and all yeah. of that. And so, and then obviously keeping everybody safe yes. uh, <laughs> as well. What do you love the most about it? Or what have, can you share any of maybe an experience that happened for you or anything that just... Absolutely, and I, I know you're probably expecting like a really great animal story, but and there are lots of those. I do have a lot of animal stories, but I think one thing that I take or pull a lot of joy from in this job that I do um, has got to do with the people that I meet. And for me, Alison, it's the, I, I just get goosebumps thinking of it now, but it's the, the first timers, right? Like you, first yeah. time in South Africa, first time seeing anything like an elephant a giraffe it must be so bizarre to see it for the first time in real life and you know the stories for me are when i get the guests that come through who have saved their entire lives to spend three days with me you mm -hmm. know what i mean mm -hmm. um this is something i do every day so i see it every day and it's always humbling for me to to see it through my guests eyes for the first time and i i remember one very specific moment it was a small moment a tiny little moment but I had first timers also from America, um, much elderly couple, and but also bucket list for their entire lives. They had been planning this and saving for it, and the time came, and I was the lucky one to to show them this beauty, you know. Yeah. And I remember we were sitting in this um, elephant sighting. It was a breeding herd of about eighty plus elephants, um, babies, moms, bulls, you name it, all together, and the vehicle was just so quiet you know like it was a moment where i felt it wasn't a moment to interpret anything that was happening in that moment it was more of just there was such an energy there and as i turned around to check in on my guests there were just tears of joy just streaming down her face and like i'm honestly even just getting a lump thinking about it but oh. it's the tears it's the i cannot believe that this is happening right now yeah. you know she's and just, I and mean, you get to be part of that and moment. And I get to be part of that moment, yeah, you yeah. know. And, and it, for me, it, it was that fleeting moment of just like, how lucky am I that I got to make you feel that way, you know, mm -hmm. that you, at the age that you're at, you know, got to feel this magic with me today, you know. And it's the tears of joy. And then it's the, you know, and there's always like a story that's related to why they're feeling this emotion. And so at the end of the day it's it's moments like that yeah. i think that and and there are a lot of those moments yeah. you know where you oh, get I'm to sure. experience that with people i'm sure and i mean you could be back in corporate right <laughs> 100%. selling pharmaceutical products vitamins <laughs> right now right i mean and, and you know because that is such a detour that you took Absolutely. And now you get to experience these amazing moments because you're living your purpose. I feel like you like said, I am. you feel aligned. And you know, how many of you feel that calling, but you feel like, well, if I do this crazy thing, what will people think? What will my family think? What will my friends think? I mean, mm -hmm. I know for myself, when I took the pivot to becoming an entrepreneur, I had so many people that said I was gonna fail, so many people that said, you know, you are absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just have to listen. You have to follow your own heart because mm -hmm. nobody is gonna know what's right for you except for you, Yourself. right? Absolutely. I mean, and it sounds like you were absolutely born to do this. Now you also said that there are not many female guides. Right. It is, you know, I mean, this industry for a very long time has been a male dominated industry. I mean, think about it, it's rough and tough. You know, you're driving these land cruisers, you're carrying rifles, you're changing tires, you're dealing with big elephants and lions and all these hairy scaries. And yeah, so for a long time, many years, it has been a very male dominated industry. Um, but now we are starting to see a lot more females coming in, which I absolutely love. Speaking of elephants, Oh my gosh! <laughs> There's one right wait a minute. Us. Can you see this? No, the chair. Okay, oh, wait. Just... I gotta do this. <laughs> that is incredible. Look at him feeding right there. Hi. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh! How special is that? Wow. There he wait. Comes here back. he goes. Hi. <laughs> hey, honey. Look at that. Wow. 
kind of stole the show here. <laughs> can you believe that? that here, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll do this for the rest. I don't know if we can see. Roth is there he is. <laughs> there he is. And off he goes. Just came to say hi. hi. So, um, so not many females, but that's changing. It's changing. It's changing quite a bit. Um, and I love to see it. I absolutely love to see it happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's natural, naturally so. I mean, we, we're moving into the 21st century now. Yeah. Women can do anything a man can do. And a hundred percent. And don't get me wrong. It's, um, you know, it's a, I find that when we're in uniform and with the team, especially now working in the, even in the team before this, there was very, very few females. And there are times where you have to push a little harder just to be like, okay, you know, I don't actually need your help. I can do this. But yeah, I always say that when I'm in this uniform, we're all equals, mm -hmm. right? When I'm outside of this uniform, by all means, open the door for me. <laughs> be a Why not? Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah, but, that's, that's awesome. But you yeah. are, I mean, and she is absolutely incredible. She takes control of that of the experience and um you are going after like <laughs> right and so it we is. we want to cheer you on because yes, let's just you. share what this is right so um it's been an absolute dream of mine so every year there is this it's sort of like a major event it's called safari guide of the year where you pretty much get nominated i almost see it as like the best of the best in the industry right so they pretty much choose five contestants throughout the entire industry um to partake in a week's worth of like i wouldn't say competing but it is it's sort of like challenging each other you know yeah. so you'll be doing um you'll be up against your your contestants you know where you'll be doing game drives you'll be doing hosting you'll be doing bushwalks you get assessed on your birds your tracking your tracking sign you know, so it's pretty much everything that we she stand knows for. the name <laughs> of literally hundreds of birds. Like the literally, it's first of all hard to even see them like a, a mile away, and she's, you know, yeah. the names. I mean, yeah, like some bizarre. Things. Yeah, it's and even just from the sounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know those. So I do. Incredible. I do love the birds. So, yeah. so the the safari guide of the year. Safari yeah. guide of the year, and has never been won by a female. Right. Until now, this is going to be happening <laughs> we for so. Kimberly Lahani. Yes. So we'll, we want to like cheer her on. I'd really, I'd really love that. Um, honestly, look, it's not a sure thing. They still need to be voted in, but I think there is a strong pull, especially from our team. We've all spoken about it, and it's such a great feeling because they too feel the same thing and they all also backing me so yeah yeah so i've got a whole year to prepare myself now but um i've got a really good feeling about it yeah it's been envisioned i'm manifesting it yeah it's in the mind See, you know <laughs> we're in sync here here's another manifesto yeah big time <laughs> all right well this has been amazing thank you so and much i for just you me. know this has been really an incredible experience and thank, thank you, you for doing this interview this was it. on the spot she hasn't done this before and i said hey i want to share your story thank so, you thank i appreciate you. it so much thank so i hope you. you enjoyed this episode of the scale it method podcast yeah. and you know what i'm just going to show a few more elephants because oh, the well, little family has come, come by so look at, look at this oh there's the baby oh wow look. and then a smaller one by the river there oh my gosh look at this that is I don't know if this amazing. is definitely the first podcast that I've done with elephants. <laughs> uh, maybe the first one you've seen with elephants. Look! Oh, oh and there's a baby something. down there. Can you They're see? Running to the water. They're all going to go down and oh, have a drink Oh, my now. goodness. Look at this baby over here. That is so special. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you've seen it here. Scale It Method podcast. If you haven't subscribed yet, do it now. Uh, share it with your other business owner, friends, people that you care about. Until next time, get out there and go for it. Go after your dreams. They're there. They're waiting for you. <laughs>